Please stand and face the entrance of the church. It's here at the entrance of the church where we greet the remains of Patrick Bell, right next to the baptistry, reminding ourselves that it's when he was baptized that he received the promise of eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, Patrick McNamee Bell died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him in eternal life. Now I direct your attention to the cantor, Mr. McCarthy, who used to teach music here for many years. <laughs> Please join me on our first song in your booklet, How Can I Keep From Singing? We'll use verse one, two, three, and five. that opening hymn um, because Pat couldn't keep from singing. It's probably Elvis or the Beatles, but but, uh, also songs of praise at church. On behalf of Molly and Lucy and Katie and Joey, I welcome you to this funeral mass, this time of remembrance of, of course, Pat's life and the way he's touched all our lives and remembering God's mercy and grace and the hope of eternal life that is proclaimed in song and scripture and our prayers and so many ways uh, throughout this Mass. My name is Father John Kearns. I'm the pastor here at Our Lady of the Lake now almost 10 years uh, this July. And it's a privilege for me to be able to preside at this Mass. And I'm, um, uh, as I gather here at the altar, I'm accompanied by some brother priests, Father Joel McMahon, who was my immediate predecessor here at Our Lady of the Lake and, of course, knows the Bell family quite well. And then a cousin, Ed Coleman, a cousin of Pat's, part of the, on the McNamee, McColeman. Yeah, there's just, there's a connection, and it just goes on and on and on. So you're probably related in some way. So 
but we're welcome, uh, Ed. He's at St. Michael Church in Oak Ridge, and also the, the little mission church, St. Henry in Dexter, where my sister and her family are members of the parish. Also, Father Pat Couture, who's a Jesuit priest and was at Jesuit High School when Molly and Kate, or excuse me, when, when uh, Lucy and Katie were there, and now is a parochial vicar at St. Ignatius, and of course, our own parochial vicar, Father Suresh Amaraj. So, well, glad to have them here um, as Pat, when he was doing a eulogy for his mom's funeral, saw five priests and said, we got a basketball team. Well, we had to deliver, so we're here. So we, all five of us uh, were able to make the squad today. So. And so as a people of faith, let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord as our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened. May our hope of resurrection for our departed brother and your servant, Pat, be, also find new strength. Through our Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now as we listen to the sacred scriptures, I invite you all to be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak, saying, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. You know the word that he sent to the children of Israel as he proclaimed peace through Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of all. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me on the refrain of the Lord is my shepherd. You'll find that on page four in your books. My shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd. 
Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. We are courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. We walk by faith and not by sight, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet, we are courageous, and we, we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive replicants according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <clears throat> now, as we prepare to hear the gospel, it's a sign of reverence because these are the very words of Christ. I invite you to stand and join in the singing. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Alleluia. be with you and, and with your a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke glory to you Lord it was about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon because of an eclipse of the Sun when the veil of the temple was torn down the middle Jesus cried out in a loud voice Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when Jesus had said this, he breathed his last. Now there was a virtuous and righteous man named Joseph, who though he was a member of the council, went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. After he had taken the body down, he wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid him in a rock-hewn tomb in which no one had yet been buried. At daybreak on the first day of the week, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were puzzling over this, behold, two men in dazzling garments appeared to them. They were terrified and bowed down their faces to the ground. They said to them, 
Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He has been raised. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. We commence these funeral rites with a, a sign, a symbol of baptism, holy water sprinkled upon the remains of Patrick McNamee Bell, reminding us of the day he was baptized and the promise that was given to us that we repeat uh, from the words of St. Paul, if we share in a death like his, so we shall share in his resurrection. And not that the death is, of course, exactly the same details of Christ, but it was a human death. That God himself chose to become a human being like us. I mean, first of all, that alone is an amazing and awesome mystery. That God would love us so much that he would become one of us. And face all the struggles we face, all the temptations we face, all the sufferings that we face. And even death, so that we could be saved. So that he could break the bonds of death and provide a day like this where we can gather as people of hope, not despair. And uh, the, the evangelist reports to us that it was about 3 o'clock. Well, so it was for Pat. So it was about 3 o'clock, a little after 3 o'clock, as uh, he, he and his brother were praying in the room. The family was all there. But it's also the promise that we might have that hope of resurrection. It's a beginning, as baptism was a beginning or a trajectory toward the hope of eternal life. And in today's second reading, we hear St. Paul describe it again in this way. Brothers and sisters, we know, we know that our earthly dwelling, a tent, will eventually be destroyed. It'll be torn down. We know this life is not permanent. I mean, we know that at some level. We don't like to think about it. We ignore it most of the time because we're human. We, we don't want to think about the departure but St. Paul reminds us it's also about the arrival the hope that we have in eternal life because we have a building he said even though this tent may be destroyed we have a building from God a dwelling not made of human hands but eternal in heaven that's what draws us here that's what draws us here although we do focus on the tragedy of past death because that just is overwhelming I mean, as we pray the rosary, uh, Mr. Clark read the, that scripture passage for when we prayed on the, the mystery of the death of Jesus on the cross. It described that the temple curtain in the temple was torn in two at the moment Jesus died as a symbol of the grief of all humanity, the grief that, that uh, uh, is, is felt so strongly. And our hearts feel torn in two. And we can be overwhelmed by that, just way too young. A man too much alive, you know, more alive than most of us. You know, they say sometimes it'll take two people to replace him. You know, no, more like three or four, you know. A great loss. But if we stop there, we're filled with despair. If we stop there, we're filled with despair. But the Christian heart focuses on eternity. And on a day like this, we're forced to. Sometimes we're forced to before we're ready for that. And, 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 but we need to remember that that's the ultimate trajectory. Not with the idea that we should get over the death. No, not like that at all. In fact, I don't want to get over, I don't, I don't possibly ever want to forget someone of the likes of Pat Bell. But, but it makes us more conscious that our relationship with him still exists, but now in an eternal fashion through Christ through Christ alone. As a, one of the prayers in the Catholic rituals uh, says in another place that, that though, you know, it seems that, that uh, this, our hearts have been broken, that uh, our, 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 our ties are still strong. The relationships that we have are not unraveled in death is the way it says. Our relationships are not unraveled 
in death. But events like this force us to see new re realities in a new way. This is why we pray for eternal salvation. Not only praying for Pat's eternal salvation, but for our own as well. So that we will all be reunited in heaven. We live for that. We pray for that. In fact, St. Paul goes on to say that that's what makes us courageous. In fact, Pat was pretty courageous. Even toward the end, you know, some people when they're on hospice, they're on hospice for, you know, a few weeks or several months, almost a year. But, but uh, as, as it was getting close to the end, they said, wow, it looks like, I mean, wait, I mean, you've been in hospice for 24 hours. And Pat had enough strength to say, do you think it'll break a record? <laughs> wow. Wow. That's courage. That's courage that comes from a confident in faith. In fact, my last conversation with Pat, he talked a lot about that. God is right here. God is right here always. And that faith tells us, again, that we will remain in that relationship. If you'll indulge me just for a bit uh, to mention something in my own personal story. My father, his uh, dad died when he was 16. In fact, my father, this is in the 20s and 30s, so there weren't penicillin, there wasn't antibiotics. There were a lot of people died of a lot more things. Death rates were higher, sadly. And he lost, actually, his mother when he was seven and, his, and two brothers. He was the only one who survived his family by the time he was 16. And he felt absolutely isolated and all alone. He was at a Catholic high school, and they were on a retreat, not like the Jesuit encounters, but a quiet one, a very quiet retreat. But it, it, it gave him a chance to reflect and realize, I've lost everything you can imagine in this world. The only thing I have left is my faith in God. And as a 16-year-old kid, he realized, if I lose that, I will have lost absolutely everything. So he made a commitment that day, and I offer this to you because I think it's helpful for us. It was certainly helpful for me to guide all my life. He began praying every day, and he never missed, that he would never lose his faith. He would never lose his faith in God. And that guided him all his life. And, and made a huge impact on all the people that he served. In fact, I thought it was interesting. We, at, uh, when he died, we had, uh, we're, we're Irish also. So we had a wake, and, and my dad had delivered all the children for the funeral director. So the funeral director let us take the, the coach home and, and bring dad into the living room and have a, a, like a wake. But, but my mom placed all the photographs of his mom and dad and siblings in the casket. Because we go with Pat. We're, we're all, we're still in this together. We're still united. And that sense of eternity, I think, is important for us to remember. In fact, I always feel that strong, most strongly when we gather for the Eucharist, as we do today. This is one of the reasons why Catholics celebrate the Mass. We use the word celebrate because it's a hope that we can have, even in the midst of sorrow. We celebrate this Mass by which Christ becomes present, speaking to us in his holy word, and physically present in the Eucharist, the body and blood of Christ. So if Jesus, the king of all creation, the one who conquered death and gained for us our salvation and opened the gates of heaven through his resurrection, if he's here, then we're present to everything he's present to. We're present to him. We're present to everything he's present to. And I feel closest to my departed beloved at this altar than any other time of any day or any week. In fact, I know a man who lost a son in a freak accident, a baseball game. But when he would receive communion, before he'd consume the host, he'd just look up to heaven and say, Scotty, the name of his son. It's a way to remind ourselves that we are always united through the grace of Christ. And so let us remain close to Jesus. I think that's something that sustained Pat in his life, but also can sustain us in our grief. Stay close to Jesus, who, who when the apostles were most worried about where is this all going, at the Last Supper, they're trying to figure this out. How do we know the way? Thomas asked that question, the apostle. Jesus tells him, I am the way and the truth and the life. 
No one comes to the Father except through me. The Father who created everything and sent his only Son, who was also there at creation, but now born into time, is saying, follow me. I am the way. I am the way and the truth and the life. Therefore, let us entrust Pat to Jesus to lead him on the way to heaven. Let us also take consolation in the truth The truth of God's love for us. Love so great that we don't even have to fear death. Even though it breaks our hearts, we can still have hope that one day we will be united again. And let us then live this life to the fullness as Pat did so fully. He lived this life. So that one day we may enjoy with Pat and all the saints and all our beloved departed and, of course, Christ himself, the fullness of life in heaven with Jesus, who is the way and the truth and the life. Please stand as we bring our prayers before God, knowing that God desires to hear and answer us. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer to the following petitions. For our church community, that collectively we may be an example of God's peace, love, and joy through our words and actions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. That the bishops and priests of the church and all who preach the gospel may be given the strength to express in action the word they proclaim. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. For those who are experiencing the pain of cancer, Crohn's disease, or any other illness, may they be comforted by God's healing grace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For my dad, who lived a life of generosity and dedication to God and his family, that he may be welcomed with love and joy into the heavenly home of the eternal Father. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our family and friends, that we may be given hope, peace, and consolation, treasuring the memories that we have with him. Heal our pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For my dad, whose faith sustained him during this earthly life, that he may be received by the saints with love and joy into the eternal dwelling place prepared for him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, (laughs) hear our prayer. O God, creator and redeemer of all the faithful, grant to the souls of your departed servants release from all their sins. Hear our prayers, especially today for Pat and for all those whom we love. And give them pardon that they have always desired. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Please join me on page six, Be Not Afraid. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. Shall see the face of God and live. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me, and I.
If you pass through raging waters in the sea, you shall not drown. If you walk amid the burning flames, you shall not be harmed. If you stand before the power of hell and death is at your side, oh, that I Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant, Pat, may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord God, Almighty and Eternal Father, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, we gain an everlasting dwelling place ready, made for us in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the unending hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, heaven Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, 
And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and you drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. We proclaim your death, O Lord. And profess your resurrection. And profess your resurrection. Until you come again. Until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. And remember your servant, Pat, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters, too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen.
We are at the top of page nine in the order of worship. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away. Lamb of God, you take away. The sins of the world, the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away. Lamb of God, you take away. The sins of the world Have mercy on us Have mercy on us Lamb of God You take away Lamb of God You take away The sins of the world Sins of the world Grant us peace Grant Please kneel. For those who are not Catholic or have not received communion before, you're welcome to come forward for a blessing. You can indicate that by, by having your hands across your shoulders, and then I or one of the priests will uh, pray a God's blessing over you, or you remain in the pew if you prefer. And for those who require a low-gluten host, uh, I will have low-gluten host at my communion station over on this side, the east side. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
on page 10, on eagle's wings. And he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of his hand. I am the bread of life, page 12. I am the bread of life. 
You who come to me shall not hunger, and who believe in me shall not thirst. No one can come to me unless the Father beckons, and I will raise. The bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. And if you eat of this bread, you shall live forever. You shall live forever. And I will Verse 4, I am the resurrection, I am the life, if you believe in me, even though you die, you shall live forever, and I will Yes, Lord, we believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world, and I will And I will raise you up, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up on the last day. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your servant, Pat Bell, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace. 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, uh, we have an opportunity for some uh, sharing of memories, and then afterwards in the reception hall downstairs, we will have more opportunities. But here's some prepared comments. Molly. That was the public speaker between us, so I'm going to try my best to make him proud. Um, Pat wanted to come to his own funeral, but <laughs> Father John had to burst the bubble a little bit and explain that a Catholic funeral is to pray for the repose of his soul and would have to take place after he passes. So Pat helped us plan this funeral. He picked the music and he picked the, out the bracelets that say, pray for Pat. If you didn't get one, they're at the entrance. Um, wear them proudly for Pat. This eulogy was written by the kids and I. We want to thank everyone for showering our family with love over the last month. Thank you to the starting line up here. Pat would be really happy that he had a team of five up here. <clears throat> Pat leaves behind a legacy that most would envy. I don't need to describe the kind of man that Pat was because through all the Caring Bridge and Facebook comments and the packed church, it's apparent that everyone knows what kind of a guy he was. And we know that everyone in this church also has a Pat Bell-sized hole in their hearts. Our Lady of the Lake is a special place for our family. Pat has been a parishioner here his entire life. We got married here. Pat and the kids went to school here. And our kids received all their sacraments thus far here. This front corner is our spot. Pat wanted the kids to sit up here so they would see what's going on on the altar and be more engaged in Mass. Somewhere along the way, it also dawned on me that Pat is a planner and a safety guy, and sitting up here would provide a quick escape in the event of any kind of emergency. <laughs> Speaking of safety, when there was a criminal on the loose in Lake Oswego 10 plus years ago, Our Lady of the Lake went into lockdown. Pat called me minutes after the school email came out and said he was already parked in front of the school. I asked him what he thought he could do, and he said, I don't know, but I have my golf clubs in my trunk and a whistle, and I will, <laughs> and I will make that guy sorry if he comes near the school. And he really would have done anything to protect any child, anytime, anywhere. Pat was the most amazing father to Lucy, Katie, and Joey. He coached all three of them in numerous sports throughout the years. In addition to sports, he never missed a teacher conference, dance recital, field day, jogathon, or school performance of any kind. He knew all the softball cheers, the names of all the horses at Katie's barn, and all the Jesuit cheers when the girls started cheerleading for the Crusaders. He also sang proudly to Taylor Swift, Justin Bieber, and Hannah Montana, and made sure that the kids knew all the words to his favorite Elvis and Beatles songs. When the kids were little, he seriously wanted to apply to be the fifth wiggle because he had the dance moves. <laughs> Pat was so proud of our kids. They were always his number one priority, and he worked hard to give us a great life. He was so proud to watch Joey play varsity basketball last year. He beamed with pride and a hint of jealousy at the LaSalle game when his high school basketball coach, Clayghorn, told Joey that he was better than Pat ever was. <laughs> <laughs> we are blessed that we will continue to see the best parts of Pat in our kids. All three of them got his kind, faithful, and generous spirit, his dry sense of humor, and his love of the Portland Trailblazers. <clears throat> Katie has Pat's beautiful blue eyes and is cautious, patient, and compassionate, and can make a quick exit just like Pat. Joey inherited his athleticism, his quiet competitiveness, and his mild-mannered disposition. Lucy got his not-so-quiet competitiveness, drive, and confidence. Pat loved everything about Christmas. Every year, he strived for our house to look as much like Clark Griswold's as he could, because he wanted to make sure Santa would see our house. He loved spoiling his kids and nieces and nephews, especially on Christmas. We would go into Toys R Us together, and Pat would get his own shopping cart, fill it up, and then overflow into my shopping cart. And that was just his first trip there. <clears throat> Outside of being a dad and a husband, coaching was Pat's greatest achievement. He started coaching at the age of 20, 
and over the years has coached football, basketball, soccer, baseball, and softball. He was a mentor on and off the field. A good coach can change a game, but a great coach can change a life, which Pat certainly did. He's been to former players' weddings, confirmations, and one former player was the first to offer to be on the liver transplant list for Pat. Pat said that he was the first of seven kids to be going to heaven because he was his mom's favorite. <laughs> and she missed him so much. In his final days, Pat's competitive nature was still as strong as ever when the doctor said he'd never seen anything like this. Pat was sure he had to be breaking some kind of record for the fastest dividing cancer cells or what Father said earlier about the quickest time on hospice. <clears throat> he was still his sweet self up to the end thanking us for taking care of him and telling us he loved us. He made sure that he got me anniversary and Mother's Day flowers and cards, which were both less than a week before he passed. He also kept his sense of humor until the end by quoting the movie Elf and telling the girls to try to get a husband that's as cool as him. I found the eulogy Pat wrote and read at his mom's funeral, and from here on, I'm just going to where he said mom because it is so fitting. This is a testament to how Pat was raised and that he was such a good son to listen to his mother and that's why he was her favorite. Pat was raised and raised his kids by just a few simple rules. Go to church, have faith that God has a plan for you, work hard, try not to be the center of attention, which he was still working on that one. <laughs> Keep God in the center of your life and take care of each other. Pat never once lost or even slightly wavered in his faith in God. He was born a Catholic and died a Catholic and stayed strong in his faith every second in between. He led his children by being a shining example of how to live your life the right way. He left a lasting impression on everyone he met. He was a beacon of light and a pillar of strength for all to lean on, never asking anything in return. He will be missed by all who were lucky enough to have known him. We love you, Pat and we will miss you until we meet again in heaven. That's beautiful, thank you. Five foot nine inch sophomore from LaSalle High School, starting point guard, Pat Bell. That's how he told me he wanted me to introduce him today. <laughs> I thought about what he said, and then I gently and compassionately reminded him that he was the backup point guard. Uh, you can say those things to your dying friend when you've been best friends for 42 years. Uh, it's very hard to stand here and come up with the right things to say about someone who's been a part of my life for so long. Uh, my name is Jeff McLaughlin, and Pat and I, like I said, have been best friends for 42 years. I have hundreds and hundreds of memories and stories that involve him. Uh, we met during gym class freshman year at LaSalle in 1980. Uh, we bonded over a shared interest in playing and talking sports, music, trying to be funny, surviving high school. We stayed great friends forever, telling stories to each other. It usually started with, do you remember when? Pat loved giving people nicknames. Mine was Mac. Uh, a friend from high school recently told me that she's heard me and Mac for as long as she can remember. Hearing her say that put a big smile on my face and made me realize how many things we did together, the experiences that we had, and how much I'll miss that. Pat was a good athlete in high school. He was competitive, but more than anything, he was tough and smart. He loved basketball the most, but honestly, baseball and football were his best sports. Our high school team was not great at football, but Pat was a great leader, and guys wanted to play with him, and they responded to him. He was a great friend in high school. He wasn't shy about being the center of attention. He liked a big house. He was nice, he laughed at himself, and he loved making other people laugh. 
But when I think about him back then, what stands out more than anything is that people gravitated towards him. It's hard to do in high school, but he had it. And by the looks at how many people are here today, people still gravitate towards him. Pat was also a goofball and had a very mischievous side. We once spent a weekend at the beach and Pat convinced me that we should talk in British accents all weekend <laughs> because he thought girls would be more attracted to us if we were British. <laughs> I, I've never been to the UK, never spoken with a British accent, and I sounded very bad. Pat, on the other hand, had evidently been practicing his accent for years <laughs> for just this moment because he sounded perfect. The story goes on and on, but know that, yes, girls do like guys with British accents. Uh, he loved quoting movies, too. We once rented a movie, Strange Brew, and watched it at my parents' house, and then that weekend a snowstorm came in and we got stuck at the house for days. We watched that movie over and over, and then proceeded to drive our friends crazy by quoting it out nonstop for the next five years. Other movies got the same treatment. He loved Caddyshack, Stripes, Ghostbusters, Fletch, Bull Durham. I'm struck by the fact that my friend isn't here to banter anymore with me about that. We had other many great friends at LaSalle and we all became inseparable. The list of things I've done with him and this group of friends is long. We went on trips together. We've been to Vegas multiple times, Mexico, Sun Valley, Southern California, and to Green Bay for a Packers game. Recently we were planning a golf trip to Nevada and also a trip to Costa Rica. Uh, we went to many concerts together over the years. Pat loved Huey Lewis, The Outfield, The Beach Boys, The Cars, Paul McCartney, which we've seen five, six, seven times, Van Halen. We went to college together, we lived together, and we spent many nights having way too much fun together. Um, I think I probably need to take a moment and personally thank Pat's five older siblings. Thank you for being so much trouble for your mom. By the time Pat and I was in high school, being child number six meant he had a certain amount of leeway because his mom was so tired <laughs> from raising the older kids. We, of course, utilized this leeway to our advantage. I'd especially like to give a special shout out to his brother, John, because no matter how much trouble Pat and I got, in, got into, it was never as bad as what John did. <laughs> Pat loved his family, all of his family. In high school, he used to bring his other old, younger brother, Tim, over to my house. Tim and I are still great friends, and I recently told him that a bell has been in my family for 42 years. And without Pat around, I'm gonna need Tim to step up his game. There's a huge void, and I'm gonna need Tim to be that bell in my life. Pat had a very close family, and it was very fun to be far, part of that. He idolized his older brothers, Brian and Mike. He thought they were so cool because they played music. John entertained us, even though we know he didn't want to hang around us. John, I'm sorry, but whenever you weren't home, we'd hang out in your room and go through all your stuff. <laughs> Pat loved his sisters, Colleen and Sheila, and they loved him. They came to all of our games and were so protective of him. In the next breath, they'd tell him what he was doing wrong on the basketball court or the baseball field. They let me into the family and I consider them family today. Pat was there for many things in my life and the lives of many of our friends. He was with me when I went out on my first date with my wife in high school. Uh, he was also there with me when I broke up with her three months later. <laughs> and, but he was there again three years later on our second first date. Nina and I returned the favor we, when we went out with him and a girl named Molly on their first date. Bachelor parties, weddings, births of children, new jobs, deaths of parents. We hit the highs and the lows together. I'm sure you've heard that Pat loved 50s and 60s music. He loved all kinds of music and he pretty much knew the lyrics to every song from the 50s and 60s. He especially loved the Beatles, but what he really loved listening to, besides the Beatles, was Elvis. Pat loved Elvis. I think what he loved more than listening to Elvis, though, was thinking he was Elvis. <laughs> Not the old Elvis, but the young, cool Elvis. Give Pat a microphone and be prepared to enter be entertained, because you're going to get the Elvis lip curl, 
His leg would start to shimmy, and then he'd start swinging his hips and actually sing. The picture on the back of the program sums him up perfectly in this moment. He had the voice, he had the moves, but what he, what he really had was the confidence. This always amazed me about him. I'm slightly embarrassed and also, also entertained, but we, we made music videos when we were young, and Pat was not surprisingly Elvis in all these videos. Also not surprisingly, he looked great. Somewhere tucked in Pat's house, there's a video of us lip syncing late at night in my basement, and there is Pat, front and center, hamming it up with all of his friends. It was a lot of fun to be his friend. Friendships evolved. Instead of, instead of high school, parties, road trips, and sports, we got older and hopefully smarter. We both bought houses in West Lynn. We played basketball here at OLL. We played golf, went on dates with our wives, and met up with friends. Everyone started having children, and then somehow the conversations between Pat and I turned to whether or not Troy Bolton from High School Musical was any good at basketball. <laughs> Sorry, girls, he wasn't. We compared notes from our favorite Radio Disney songs and continued to talk sports, music, and life. Like Molly said, coaching youth sports was a big part of his life. He actually started coaching before he had any kids. We were always talking drills and different ways to make the game fun for kids. The teams that I coached, if we had a practice game and I needed a ref, Pat was always my go-to and he never said no. Pat did have some quirks though. One in particular drove me crazy. Uh, I read his daughter Katie's Facebook post the other day and she said he was always there to pick up the phone every single time she called. And my first thought was, who is she talking about? He hated to talk on the phone. And the only time we talked on the phone was when he accidentally answered my calls. <laughs> Pat and I had a phone routine. He'd text me, inviting me somewhere. I would immediately call him back to talk about the poem because I didn't like to text. He would decline my call. And then, so then I would text him, which he'd immediately text back, which drove me crazy because I just called him and he hadn't picked up the phone. <laughs> Now I'm wondering if he wasn't picking up my calls because Katie was talking to him all the time and maybe he was talking to her. <laughs> Pat was the ultimate family man. I have four children. Every single one of them love him. Uh, and they thought he was much cooler than me. He connected with them like I'm sure he's connected with you, your child. He connected with kids because he still had a lot of kid in him. He loved being a husband and a dad. He's so proud of his kids and the people they've become. He was in on everything they did. He was constantly bragging about Lucy and Katie. He loved that he'd raised daughters that liked basketball. And he'd proudly show me text from Lucy where she was talking about the, what, the, what the Blazers needed to improve on. He loved coaching Joey in basketball and going to his games. And just being his dad and watching his son grow up, he often talked about the great friends Joey has and how it reminds him of the friends that he had in high school. I had conversations with Pat on a couple of different occasions in the past couple of years where I told him how much I appreciated our friendship and how he was the perfect friend for me at a, at a perfect time. He downplayed the moment I was trying to have, but I wouldn't let it go because I truly wanted him to know how much his friendship meant to me. Finally, I got an I know bro out of him. I saw Pat on April 1st, and then again for lunch on April 7th, and then we went out for, with a bunch of our friends on April 8th. The next week he went into the hospital because he wasn't feeling good. I checked in with him, asked him how he was doing because I knew he was in a lot of pain. In typical Pat fashion, he brushed it off and said he'd be back at full speed in no time. He didn't want me to worry about him, and he didn't want anyone else to worry about him. And for one of the few times in our friendship, he didn't want to be the center of attention. Pat lived a full life. He had great experiences. And if he was here today, I know he would want everyone to remember his great sense of humor, his caring personality, and his love for his family and friends. People gravitated towards him. And then he did something with that. He connected with them, and he made a difference in people's lives. 
He made a difference in my life. He connected with me. And I miss my friend. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. For Molly, Lucy, Katie, and Joey, to thank everybody who's come here today to pay homage to Pat. He was a great brother, a great husband, and a great father. But I'm here to tell you, he did set some records today for the most people I've ever seen in this church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, maybe a little. Standing room only. And he actually beat Ma Bell's record with the fact that Mr. Father Greiner couldn't make it today. So that would have made six. Now, Mom only had five. <laughs> so um, what we want to let you know is we're going to have a reception downstairs. Of course, everybody's invited. And again, Father Kearns was there for the family, and we just really appreciate it for all of us. So with that, Father. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. And uh, the reception downstairs will begin uh, at the end of this Mass. And again, that's important for us to continue to remember him. And over the weeks and months and years ahead, to uh, remind Molly and her kids how much he impacted your life. At this time, we have a final commendation. It's the notion that we're commending him to God as we pray over his remains and ask also for God's strength for us. And so before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him and may it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope that one day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Please join me on page 13. May the choirs of angels come to greet you. May they speed you to paradise. May the Lord enfold you in his mercy. May you find the eternal life. The Lord is my light and my help. It is he who protects me from harm. The Lord is my strength of my days. Before whom should I tremble with fear? May the choirs of angels come to greet you. May they speed you to paradise. May the Lord enfold you in his mercy. May you find the eternal life. Please stand. To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of Patrick McNamee Bell, your servant. In the sight of this world, he is now deceased, but in your sight, may he live forever. Forgive whatever sins he committed through human weakness, and in your goodness, grant him everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our final song is Lead Me, Lord, page 14 in your books. Blessed are the poor in spirit, longing for their Lord. For God's coming kingdom shall be theirs. Blessed are the sorrowing, for they shall be consoled. And the meek shall come to rule the world. So lead me, Lord, lead me, Lord, by the light of truth to see and to find the narrow way. Be my way, be my truth, be my life, my Lord, and lead me, Lord, today. Blessed are the merciful, for mercy shall be theirs, and the pure in heart shall see their God. Blessed are they whose hunger only holiness can fill. For I say they shall be satisfied. So leave me, Lord, leave me, Lord, by the light of truth to seek and to find Blessed are they who through their lifetime sow the seeds of peace. All will call them children of the Lord. Blessed are you, though persecuted in your holy life. For in heaven great is your reward. So lead me, Lord, lead me, Lord, by the light of truth, to see and 